Welcome to the very first conference on algorithms, complexity in mathematics, epistemology, and science. So, I have no idea whether there will be any more of these conferences. Maybe this is going to be the only one. Uh, what I want to say before, I, before it starts is that this is a different conference than almost everybody has gone to. There are mathematicians and computer scientists, computational scientists, and philosophers in the same room and expected to talk to one another. The cultures of the two different styles of conferences are quite different. The typical philosophy talk would be one hour followed by half an hour of question and answer. The typical mathematical computational sciences talk would be 50 minutes followed by five minutes of questions, usually half of which is not used. <laughs> That's very different. Uh, but the purpose of this conference is to get people to talk together. But we're going to be running the talks in the mathematical and computational science style, so not an official time for question and answer. But we'll be running it with long coffee breaks as an unofficial time for question and answer. So please, you are encouraged to ask a brief question after or two after the, the talks. But the main purpose is to go and find the speaker and talk to them afterwards when you can. All of the speakers are more than willing to uh, uh, entertain questions. Um, I will reserve any more comment on this conference until the panel discussion tomorrow. So without well, let's just begin and I want to introduce the first speaker, uh, Professor San Serna from the University of uh, Carlos III in Madrid. Although well, that's only decent. Uh, he just moved there from Valladolid. Chus, uh, as he is known to his friends, many friends in the, uh, in the world, is uh, the founder of the subject of geometric integration, and an expert in the, uh, backward error for Hamiltonian systems, uh, uh, syntactic methods for integrating Hamiltonian systems. Uh, he was the first recipient of the Dalkus Prize, which shows the regard that he has held within the community of computational scientists. He's also won uh, the Avadrova Prize, if I pronounced that correctly, which is the, the best equivalent prize in Canada is the Hertzberg Medal, which is awarded to the best scientist in Canada. Likewise, the prize that the two sets won is uh, adjudicated by Nobel Prize winners, and he had, in order to win, he had to beat chemists and physicists and other what they call uh, hard bench scientists. So it's a rare achievement for computational scientists. Um, he's been my friend for more than 25 years, so I will uh, let him take over and tell us about the classroom technical support. No, no. It's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> talk title. Uh, the original talk title was Lines to Randomness, but now we have a, a new thing. Tech support. I think it's just on oh, this. So, uh, good, uh, good morning. Uh, most uh, people are invited to give a talk at the conference. They would uh, start uh, the presentation by showing the, the gratitude to the organizers. And uh, I think uh, most of them are uh, sincere and honest when they say they are grateful for the invitation. If I want to be uh, really sincere here, I cannot really say that I'm very thankful for the invitation because in fact, I have a lot of uh, mixed uh, feelings. So my feeling of uh, gratitude is uh, mixed uh, with uh, a feeling of uh, not being too much at ease because I, I, I don't really don't, not, don't know what to expect from this uh, conference and I'm not so sure that I'm uh, qualified to speak uh, to this uh, audience. So uh, please uh, be kind uh, with your <laughs> judgments. <laughs> if uh, what I say is uh, too trivial or too well known, just uh, let me know in a polite uh, way. And, uh, <laughs> I'll uh, finish. So uh, because uh, what I really like uh, doing is uh, numerical experiments, this uh, talk will consist of uh, really two numerical experiments uh, that, uh, at least uh, to me, may seem uh, conducive to some thinking. So if, uh, if 
if I get at least uh, one view uh, to think after uh, these uh, experiments, uh, I think uh, my, my, the preparation of uh, my talk would have been worth its while. So, as I said, uh, You might just want to click on the slide once. I click. Yeah, there. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. And uh, if I want to go back, uh, uh, no, no, it's, it's now working. Okay. So, uh, so the talk will have uh, two parts, and uh, the first part is this uh, strange case of uh, companies uh, X and uh, and uh, and Y, and this is a thought uh, experiment. So uh, in this uh, particular city, uh, two companies that would be called uh, X and uh, Y uh, launched uh, simultaneously this, uh, this, uh, this uh, gadget. And uh, it was the policy of uh, both companies not to do any publicity of uh, their products, uh, thinking that uh, the satisfaction of the customers would be uh, the best uh, publicity for uh, their products. And what uh, happened is that at, at the beginning, when uh, these uh, products were introduced to the market, uh, a person called her Anne bought the X uh, E-Lot, and then the next one, that would be Ben, bought a, uh, a, 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 a Y. And after that, when we had Anne with an X and uh, Ben with a Y, uh, what happened is that everybody that had some interest in uh, buying one of those uh, gadgets uh, would run into a person who uh, randomly, who already had one of them, and would ask, "Are you happy with your uh, product? Are you satisfied, or, uh, or otherwise?" And according to the information, uh, the uh, this. Uh, future uh, customer got from the people who already had uh, the product, he or she made the uh, mind up and uh, bought uh, a copy. And what happened is that the next uh, customer got an X and then a Y and an X and an X and an X and, uh, and uh, this is the recorded evolution of the market uh, share of X. So uh, here uh, on the horizontal axis we have the number of uh, devices that have been sold, and uh, on the vertical axis, the percentage of uh, uh, market share of, 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 of X. And of course, it's quite remarkable that after maybe 30 or 40 or uh, 50 gadgets were, uh, were sold, uh, things uh, stopped uh, looking uh, random, and uh, this uh, thing stabilized, and, uh, and, 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 and so on. And then uh, we look at this, and, uh, and I think most people, when uh, seeing this uh, slide, say, okay, I mean, uh, the product uh, X is much better than the uh, product uh, Y, because markets are uh, intelligent, and, uh, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. Of course, if you are a philosopher, or a computer scientist, or a mathematician, maybe you are more sophisticated, and then you say, okay, maybe, uh, product X is not that good, but maybe it appeals to people who are more enthusiastic. And uh, when they meet a, a future customer, uh, they are uh, more outgoing and more praising about the product. So uh, that most people uh, think that there's a reason uh, for the uh, success uh, of, of, of X. But there is nothing of, of the sort. Uh, this uh, regularity of 80% is just uh, the uh, result of, uh, of, uh, of pure randomness. So what happens here is that both products are exactly the same. And everybody who uh, bought one, be it X or be it Y, was satisfied with, with uh, their purchase and recommended strongly uh, the product that they already uh, hold. So the only reason uh, the only reason that the third uh, customer, Carla, bought an X was because uh, she asked Anne, who already had an X, uh, 
had she run into Ben, who was the UI uh, owner, she would have bought uh, a UI. So this uh, process is completely driven by, uh, by, uh, by randomness. So if I repeat uh, the experiment with the same uh, rules, uh, uh, you, think, you see, uh, in another run of the same uh, experiment, it's not X that gets a, a big uh, share of the market, it's, 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 it's Y. And uh, X is only selling 10% being the product being the same. And if I run it once more, and then it settles at about 28%, uh, and if I run it again, and it settles at maybe 88%. Uh, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, the maths here is that you can prove uh, rigorously, and this is the so-called uh, polya earn uh, model, that each time uh, the experiment is run according to those uh, rules, you will see uh, the uh, market share stabilizing at a well-defined uh, well value. So randomness uh, disappears after you are. It's confined to the transient initial uh, phases of uh, the introduction of, of, of the product. However, the limit of this market share will change from each uh, replication of the experiment uh, to the next. And in fact, you can prove uh, <coughs> that the distribution of this limit will be uniform in the interval from 0% to a, uh, a, a, a uh, 100%. So, the uh, really two points that I wanted to, to, to make uh, here uh, from this uh, experiment uh, are, uh, are as follows. I mean, the first one is really a, a mathematical uh, point. And this is the, the, the random uh, procedures that involve uh, many steps, steps maybe many atoms or many molecules or many uh, individuals or many genes or, uh, or uh, many replications of, of an experiment will uh, often result in, in regular patterns. So uh, randomness uh, in those occasions uh, operates uh, when you just have a few molecules or a few ions. But after a while things uh, develop, a, uh, develop a pattern. And this is something that uh, quite strangely you can uh, prove, uh, prove uh, regularly. And then the second point here, this is a point more about uh, psychology, or if you will, about how our minds uh, really uh, operate. And this is that almost always when we are confronted with an experiment or with something, we quickly, immediately come up with a theory that will explain it. I mean, this is not theory in the sense of a scientific theory, this is a Theory in inverted uh, comma is just having some general rule to deal with other occurrences of uh, the same uh, of, of the same uh, of the of the same uh, phenomena. So I think uh, this is to me this uh, experiment uh, experiment shows. And uh, coming to the first point, well, in fact, we are really surrounded by uh, patterns and regularities that are caused uh, by, uh, by randomness. Of course, you put uh, uh, sugar or salt, say, into, say it's salt here, into that uh, glass of, uh, of, uh, of water, and the ions of uh, chlorine and uh, Na will distribute themselves uniformly uh, in all the, uh, the water, and your coffee gets uniformly uh, sweet when you add uh, and, uh, and, uh, and sugar. And uh, contrary to our thinking, this uniformity is not, of course, due to the fact that the molecules try to fill the voids and they say, okay, this is an area with no sugar, that's why we'll move into, into, into there. This is the pure uh, result of, 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 of randomness. Of course, of more important to us is the fact that here we have these uh, molecules of oxygen that are vital to your listening to my talk and to my delivering uh, the talk. And uh, the uh, molecules of oxygen are uniformly distributed. They don't all go uh, to one core. 
and, and, uh, but this is the product of randomness. It's not the molecules that think that, okay, I need to go to this uh, person because uh, she needs uh, to, to breathe. Uh, it's just the pure result of randomness. The same happens if you've got uh, bacteria or uh, viruses in, uh, in some, uh, in some uh, dish. They will uh, distribute themselves uniformly. And uh, they do this because of a uh, random motion, not because they discover that there's an area with no other bacteria and they will get more food, uh, more food in there. But when we see this, particularly if it's with higher forms of, of, of life, like lions or things like that, we tend to think that they are very clever and go to regions where they are the only lion and uh, not to compete uh, for, uh, for the food. And uh, of course, the idea that we always try to find, uh, find uh, causes is, is uh, I think, it's a common uh, place. Uh, for instance, if you read uh, War and, uh, and, uh, and um, Peace, I, I think uh, there are Tolstoy sees history in the same light as I see my experiment here. You just have one instance of where this experiment is run. Tolstoy understands that history is uh, random, that is uh, just uh, the product of many, many small causes that interact uh, with each other. And if things with uh, Napoleon's invasion of uh, Russia had been slightly different, uh, I mean, uh, Napoleon would have defeated uh, Russia. Uh, but most people think of causal explanations of history, that uh, Rome uh, went on and cut back and uh, disappeared because the Romans had a superior sense of justice or better roads or, uh, or what have you. And, uh, well, there are many uh, books, I won't go into, into this, but uh, this uh, popular book, Thinking Fast and Slow, that I'm sure that many of you have uh, read, give you many, many instances of cases where there's no causality whatsoever, and yet, uh, invariably, when you present uh, those uh, facts uh, to people, uh, people invariably understand them in terms of causes, causes that don't exist, and we come up with uh, theories to explain things that are just uh, the result of, 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 of randomness. Of course, it's now uh, very fashionable to say that all those things uh, have uh, come to us as a result of uh, their having evolutional advantages, and uh, and. Uh, to many people, it's clear that the learning algorithms that we must uh, have in our heads are somewhat biased to favor generalization and constructions of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of theories. Uh, even in many cases where such uh, generalizations are not, uh, are not warranted. And those learning algorithms, most of the time, are right. And this is why we find it uh, very uh, disconcerting when we, we, we find that our theories uh, are completely wrong and don't, uh, don't, uh, don't uh, work at all. Well, because I was a bit anxious about this uh, talk, I decided to, to try it in my department uh, last week. And, uh, and uh, I invited people to come up with uh, comments. And at the end, uh, one of my uh, colleagues, which is uh, distinguished uh, people in the linear algebra, he uh, he said that to him, this uh, experiment uh, really had a lesson. And, and this uh, lesson to be learned is that if you want to launch a product, then you should be the first in the market, because this will give you an advantage. And uh, so you should concentrate on being there first, and not on a very, a very high, uh, a, a, a very good, uh, a, a good uh, product. But then I told him, that, in fact, his remark was, to me, it was just an illustration of the point that he wanted to make. That I had shown him one example, and he immediately came up with a few. That would apply to all uh, subsequent uh, examples of the same, uh, of the same, uh, of the same kind. Uh, it's quite likely that his uh, theory is, uh, is, uh, is correct. But still, it's an example that when you show someone something, that, I mean, she will come up with a few. Well, the second uh, group of examples is, is, is more, uh, is more uh, mathematical about uh, 
the power of uh, randomness in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in algorithms. And uh, so maybe uh, most uh, philosophers maybe don't like the maths, and maybe the mathematicians think the mathematics are too trivial. But, uh, <laughs> so what I'm going to compute is I want to approximately find the value of uh, such an integer. So this uh, rho, uh, which is the exponential of minus x, is uh, seen here uh, fixed through all the experiments. It's the so-called uh, weight function, and f is really the, 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 the integer. And uh, the uh, usual way of uh, finding this is to come up with uh, nodes uh, for quadrature, xi, and weights, uh, wi, and then you find function values and weight them with those, uh, with those uh, weights, and this will give you an approximation of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of the integral. Okay, uh, so it was uh, really uh, Gauss uh, who considered the best way to uh, identify uh, the weights and uh, the nodes uh, for, the, for the quadrature. And it turns out that in this weight uh, function, the optimal uh, location of the weights of the, of the uh, sorry of the nodes is uh, uh, rather sophisticated. So you have to, if you want two nodes, you have to take the two roots of this uh, quadratic uh, polynomial, and then three roots and four roots from L4 and so on. So those are the Laguerre uh, polynomials. So they look a bit uh, weird. For instance, if you want to have a room with five uh, nodes. These are the nodes. They are really weird. I mean, this is not something you can think of, of uh, immediately. You need to be in Gauss uh, <laughs> to, to, uh, to think of that. Okay? So you see no regularity, no pattern. There's some uh, magic uh, to, uh, to it. So I test uh, the rule in some example where I know the exact uh, answer. So f of x is uh, the cosine of x, so uh, computing the integral of cosine of x into the minus x. And I've done this with the two-node rule, three-node rule, four-node rule, five-node rule. And, well, the rule is really amazing. Just with two nodes, so two function uh, evaluation, you get an error of uh, 15 percent. For most engineering applications, that will do. You can get away with that, 15 percent uh, error. But if you add more nodes, it works like uh, black magic. With five nodes, you've got an error, an error of one in a thousand. Oh, this is really, this is really uh, fantastic. And then you see that this is really the result of the cleverness of the choice of nodes and weights. Uh, for instance, if I move uh, for uh, n uh, equals five, if I move the first node, that is, should be at point 26, I, I move it to point uh, 30, a small, a small uh, change, then the error goes, uh, multiplies by approximately 10. Rather than being 1 in 1,000, it's only 1 in 100. So it's, it's really something to this uh, choice of, 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 of nodes. So for uh, future uh, reference, we are going to note that, first of all, the construction of the nodes uh, by using the, uh, the uh, Laguerre uh, polynomials needs uh, the knowledge of the wood function, this e to the minus, uh, minus x. And those uh, nodes and uh, weights, if you want to find them or to come to the conclusion that those are the best uh, choices, you need a lot of mathematics. Nowadays, when we teach this to students, uh, you have to uh, understand the theory of uh, orthogonal polynomials. You have to understand the way that uh, most functions can be very well <coughs> approximated by polynomials and so on and so forth. Uh, by the way, uh, because I, I was going to, to present this uh, here, I decided to read the original uh, Gauss on, 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 on this. this uh, Methodus Nova Viniendi in the Gradium. Okay. And, uh, and um, I, uh, to my surprise, I mean, they came up with uh, the choice 
without using orthogonal polynomials at all. Uh, but he needed even more difficult uh, mathematics. He needed uh, his knowledge of an earlier work of uh, how to rewrite the uh, hypergeometric uh, function as a continued uh, fraction. And then he had uh, the idea that by truncating the continued fraction, you would get what we nowadays call body approximates to the function and uh, to the optimal approximation and so on and so forth. So, so we, we now teach this to students. We need a lot of theory. And Gauss needed even more because he didn't take the, the shortest uh, path uh, to, the, to the result. So here we are in something that was typical of algorithms that were using, uh, used uh, before we had computers. You needed a lot of thought and a lot of mathematical theory to construct the algorithm. And you were trading that work in constructing the algorithm against the fact that when applying the algorithm, you had very little resources and then you, have, you wanted to do little uh, work. So this is essential to uh, algorithms that were used in e-computer days. In fact, the way I did this was uh, very much in a p-computer approach because the weights and nodes, uh, I could have uh, found them with, uh, in here, but I just uh, went to the library and borrowed uh, Abramovitz and Stegun and copied them down. And uh, well, I only did the arithmetic, to be honest, uh, on the computer. Uh, I mean, I really did no mathematics with, 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 uh, with uh, my, uh, my computer. So you see that this room is, 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 is really clever. Gauss was certainly very, very clever. So, but maybe uh, it doesn't work in all cases. So let's make life uh, more difficult uh, for our uh, group. Well, the, the first uh, way which I can make life more difficult is to take uh, the, uh, the fifth uh, root of x as an as a, a, a link. So this has the difficulty that this function is not uh, differential at uh, zero. It's not a terrible uh, singularity. But just having this minor singularity at zero uh, impairs uh, terribly the performance uh, of, 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 of the rule. So you see, this is uh, the results. And for comparison, here is the cosine. You see that here there is a dramatic reduction of the error as you add more nodes. But as soon as the integrand, is uh, lacking in uh, regularity, you see uh, the errors decrease, but very mildly. So the rule doesn't cope all that well with uh, more functions. The rule, again, is based on theory. And uh, in all or most mathematical theories need hypotheses. And the hypotheses of our theorems do not hold. Uh, the physics of the theorems do not hold. Either. But we can make life even more difficult if, uh, rather than computing integrals <coughs> over a line, we will go to, to multiple uh, integra in integrals, or to, to curvature, to use a uh, classical uh, language. So now say that we have uh, small a variables, and uh, we have this uh, weight uh, function, and we extend the rule in the obvious way by applying the same uh, weights uh, and nodes in each, uh, along each coordinate uh, axis. How would uh, the room perform if you increase the dimensionality of all uh, the problems? So again, to, to have an easy integrand, what I know for sure, the value of the integral, I took uh, the product, uh, mathematical, mathematician would say the tensor product of uh, d copies of the cosine of the cosine function. And if we solved uh, this with, uh, with this Gauss uh, Laguerre uh, rule, this is uh, the kind of error that, that we, we have. First row as before, it's only one, uh, one uh, variable, the rule does very well. But if we go to four variables, so we're going to get to the power, uh, to the power uh, four, well, those stars mean big errors. Larger than 15%, uh, so there's no use, but you still get here for 10 to the minus uh, 10 to the minus uh, 3, 
to, to 16 if it were worse. And it's clear from the last uh, column that the error uh, grows uh, linearly with uh, the number of, 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 of variables. So you, you need to work more. But uh, there's a uh, tremendous uh, fly in this uh, ointment here. And uh, this is in would be. So it says the relative errors would be, not the relative errors are. Well, the reason for would be rather than are is that you cannot really use uh, the rule as I presented it here. And the reason for, uh, for this is that the number of times that you would need to evaluate your, 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 your integrand is unbelievable. <laughs> so those numbers I didn't compute by using the rule. I, I mean, I did the mathematics to know that those would be the results the rule would give, but the rule you cannot use because it up to the 64 <coughs> to have, well, here, those uh, errors are very large, so that's no use. And to get this error of, uh, of, uh, of uh, seven seven percent, you need to evaluate your 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 integral ten to the forty four times. <laughs> well, ten to the forty four is uh, I work this out uh, is uh, is roughly the number of atoms in the sun. So this is out of the question. You cannot, you cannot really use it. Well, life is even worse if you combine both things, a non-smooth integrand with uh, high dimensionality. Computational complexity is out of bounds, and uh, the errors are in disaster. So the gauss uh, legend rule is uh, very well, is very good in some cases, not always. But uh, often you have to compute uh, intervals in high dimensionality. So how do you do it? And then you can do it by using a not so clever uh, algorithm. So this is a multi uh, simulation. It's a very uh, good uh, uh, movement. So here is Again, as, as, as before, we are going to compute uh, integrals, essentially Rd. So all variables x1 to xd have been collected in one vector, which is this uh, bold uh, phase uh, x. And here is our quadrature. And this quadrature rule is very naive. We don't have the sophisticated weights that we had for uh, that Gauss taught us. All weights are the same. If I use 1,000 points, each evaluation of the function will be weighted with a factor 1 over 1,000. So nothing sophisticated. Uh, the simplest uh, anybody can uh, come up, uh, come up uh, And uh, the nodes are chosen uh, randomly. And uh, I've uh, simulated the most difficult experiment, so combining high dimensionality with non-smooth integrand with this rule. Now, please note that because the, the nodes x, n now are random, the result that I get from using the rule will likewise be random. So, just not to, if I had been a professional statistician and had done here averages and the standard uh, deviations that uh, I'm not, unfortunately, and uh, so I said write plus, and this is the difficult, the difficult in the integrand, not regular x to the uh, fifth of x. So you see that here, with 64, uh, in R64, well, the errors look very nice. Admittedly, I'm using one million uh, function, uh, function evaluations. But this rule, with one million function evaluations, gives you the same kind of error that the gauss legend would give you with 10 to the 55. So the Gain is, uh, is 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 uh, really uh, tremendous here. Well, something very important that I haven't told you is how to choose uh, the nodes in this uh, Monte Carlo uh, approximation. So the, the nodes are uh, random, 
but in a sense not completely random, not utterly random. There some, must be some uh, method in this uh, madness. And the way you, do, you, you go about this is once you found this is the algorithm, once you found uh, a, a, a node x n uh, x n minus one, uh, there you give a step of h uh, z n, where this uh, z n is a uh, standard uh, normal uh, variable, and h is a parameter. On, on the simulations, I haven't played with tuning this, this is always one of the five in all my experiments. So this, I'm here at x in, 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 in minus one, and uh, I take a step that is a normal uh, random variable, and I move to a destination at xn, uh, uh, xn star. And this is the so-called uh, proposal in the uh, Monte Carlo uh, algorithm, and then essentially, uh, not quite, but essentially the idea is that if my proposal of, of motion would take me to a location with, uh, where the weight function is larger, I would go there. But if I invite you to go to a location where the weight function is smaller, I would not go there, or I will very seldom uh, go, uh, go, go there. So there's randomness here, but it's a guided uh, randomness to a bias or a nudge, maybe, the, uh, the algorithm is two locations with, 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 with high weight function. So you see the problem with those uh, high dimensional uh, uh, integrals is that you've got this weight function, the total mass in your distribution is, is, is 1. But you are in R to the 64. So you have the mass of 1 distributed in R to the 64. Most uh, places are pretty empty. So the Gauss uh, the tensor product of the Gauss the general uh, quadrature would really waste uh, many function evaluations in areas where there's no weight. Now here, by using this randomness, we uh, identify those small portions of states where action, so to speak, <coughs> and you know to be directly uh, directed uh, to uh, uh, to that. So for comparison. Of, uh, if you want to personalize this, of the work of Metropolis against the work of, of, of Gauss, please note that here you don't need any previous a priori knowledge of the weight function. The algorithm will work regardless of the specific uh, weight and weight function. And this is because the algorithm itself, not the mind of Gauss, but the algorithm itself, <laughs> identifies the features of your problems that are relevant to solve, uh, to solve the problem. So here you have a systematic, and that's very important, this is why this is red, you have a systematic use of randomness to really steer uh, your algorithm to discover uh, locations of, uh, high, uh, of, of, of high mass. Another point where this algorithm is at variance with uh, the gauss uh, laguerre uh, quadrature is that okay, you need uh, to be intelligent to come up with this algorithm, but not very intelligent. You don't need to know uh, how to express this uh, generating function as a continuous fraction and then uh, discover the party approximants and the recurrence, the recurrence, the future recurrence for the Lager polynomials and that all those things are needed. Uh, and the algorithm is also the opposite of the Gauss degenerate algorithm in another sense. There, in those pre-computer days, mathematicians or scientists have to think a lot to devise an algorithm because you couldn't afford to have very complicated algorithms. And nowadays, you see that maybe it's better not to think so much in devising an algorithm because your your, 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 your the computer will do a lot of this slave uh, work, uh, work uh, for you. And uh, I recently read a book by this uh, Leslie Valiant, uh, Artificial Intelligence, and then he, he had this 
this sentence that I think uh, really fits with my conclusion. So you see, uh, he is only concerned with uh, the way we learn, or animals uh, learn, or uh, even the, the way uh, evolution in biology uh, moves uh, forward. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, I think this captures uh, very well this, uh, this experiment. So there are many steps. Each one of them is reasonable. But if you just had one or two or ten steps, I would put you nowhere. You just do ten nodes randomly chosen in after the 64, then you would get really nowhere. It's the combination of this uh, randomness with an overarching uh, algorithmic bar that is the key to success in, well, certainly in my application and according to Valiant in the way we learn and in the way uh, the species have, uh, have evolved. And this is the final, uh, final slides. And, uh, and maybe at the end of the day uh, there are some paradoxes here. So the first is it's true that human beings really learn by application of, a, of a random algorithms. Then maybe we find a situation where those very clever algorithms that Gauss uh, concocted were created, even though they didn't appear so to, to Gauss and they certainly don't appear so to us. Maybe we, they were created by the random inner workings of uh, Gauss uh, neurons. So that would be quite interesting. And maybe regarding the first uh, experiment, our uh, blindness uh, to randomness maybe has occurred by our using of random algorithms that have made ourselves blind to, to, uh, to randomness. So, uh, I think I have uh, left uh, time uh, for, uh, for questions, and maybe this is not to my advantage. <laughs> <laughs> glad 
I found this quotation of Tolstoy, because I think this is what often happens when we look back to history or uh, maybe this uh, financial crisis or the way governments perform and, and, and so on, we, we tend to think that these uh, regularities must have some cause. And maybe they were just dictated by the first uh, initialization of, 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 the, of the... So, so uh, in, if, you, if you want more mathematics, here yeah, what's important is that the expectation of uh, the number of sales, over, uh, expectations over many, doesn't change. As you, you, so if you start with one and one, the expectation at the end will be 50 percent. Sometimes it will be 80, sometimes it will be 20. But if uh, you have the information that at the beginning, the first, uh, out of the first 10 sales, there were 9 and 1, then X will have uh, you know, an advantage of 9 to 1 in uh, many realizations. So I, I think uh, that's, this has always, always made me think a lot. Question. You said this, you, you, what, you, you said this, that example, what doesn't apply to, to scientists, science, that they don't do that. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> you said this, I think, yeah, I think you said that when you presented example one, that science, real scientists don't, don't fall into that trap when they, when they come up with a theory. Are you sure that's true? No, I think, no, I, I, I mean, maybe, I, I, if I said that, it wasn't my, my intention, because it's not what I believe. So, I mean, I, I found it, I mean, it's not, not, not a joke. I mean, last uh, Monday, I gave this talk, just as a rehearsal at my university, and then this guy said, okay, but uh, there's the conclusion that you should draw here. And then I said, okay, you are again coming up with a, a theory just because of seeing one example. And uh, I think this is, uh, this is what I, 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 I see more than, uh, I think the theories that you, you had in the uh, paper mills that you were telling me, uh, I think they fall in the same category. That people accept them because they quickly come up with that explanation. And, and they use your own words. They just trade a set of words for another set of words uh, without any real, uh, real uh, basis for this kind of uh, generalization. David. Uh, most of statistical physics is based on the idea that randomness produces a unique result. And uh, you mentioned yourself uh, oxygen being uniformly distributed to our good fortune uh, in this room. <laughs> so what sort of random processes lead to unique long-term behavior, and which ones lead to a variable long-term behavior? Well, maybe that's a very really big, uh, big, big, uh, big, uh, big uh, question. So, so uh, yeah. So, of course, the fact that, uh, that uh, randomness would lead to uniformity, to a pattern, uh, is, is commonplace. I mean, I think uh, the way you derive thermodynamics out of statistical mechanics is by postulating, really, that uh, there will be only one uh, invariant distribution in uh, your system and uh, that the system will be ergodic so that you reach this uh, unique invariant distribution. Uh, but, uh, but here, another ex you have other examples where, uh, of course, uh, the limit is uniquely distributed, but each, uh, each single uh, replication of the experiment, so in each uh, trajectory, to use the uh, stochastic uh, uh, process uh, terminology, uh, it, it changes. Uh, but I, I, I don't have any, I, 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 uh, I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer uh, uh, for this. And, uh, and uh, I, I think that even in, 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 this is my understanding, but I know very little about this, I think that in, in many applications of statistical mechanics, uh, 
the real mathematics that you would require to prove the uniqueness of this uh, distribution, <coughs> the ergodicity and so on, are not there. People are, have not been able, the problem is so complicated that uh, you cannot uh, really prove uh, anything. So it's just like the hope. It's, uh, it's a very diff I think it's a very difficult uh, area. Because uh, Boltzmann committed suicide, and, uh, and Ehrenfest, uh, I think, uh, also you know, uh, major uh, health problems due to their much thinking about statistical mechanics. Or it could also be random events. <laughs> you just <laughs> <couldn't> know, <sir. laughs> uh, so, non technical question. I sometimes get stuck in this picture where randomness means maximal entropy or something like that. And on that account, the, the examples you gave are random, right? But yet, I, I have to agree, there's a sense where there's a pattern to the distribution of the sugar <coughs> and, the, and the convergence to market share. So can you say something about what, in what sense there's a pattern there, in what sense? It's a pattern? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I agree there is one, but I don't know how to characterize it. Right because maybe because I get stuck in this picture of maximal entropy meaning no pattern. No, I mean, I mean, I see that it conver you know. It converges. Yeah, I see it, but and, I, I, and, and it's, it's uh, I think it's a remarkable fact yeah. that it, uh, it, uh, it uh, converges. I mean, if you, if you don't think, if a person doesn't think very much about this, you think that, that because of the encounters, are uh, really random, you would always get fluctuations. But this is not the case. I mean, you can really prove uh, rigorously that if, uh, if you draw a narrow margin, uh, I mean, the, the oscillations will, will be only that small, that epsilon. But it converges to a point that's uniform over the interval, right? So yeah. in that sense, the entropy is maximal. Yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, sorry, this is, <coughs> I mean, it, it, it really stabilizes, and then you can prove that it will always stabilize, that each time you run the, 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 the experiment, it will stabilize at a different, uh, at a different uh, value. Well, in, uh, I, I think in, uh, in, a, in a maybe in probability to say something more general, this is just a manifestation. This is one of those cases where you cannot infer the averages over many realizations from just looking at one realization for a long time. So in, in, in most of statistical physics, there is no distinction between what uh, I think uh, Gibbs uh, calls the ensemble behavior. So you imagine one million copies of your system and then you look at uh, how they are distributed at any given time. Uh, I think it's a basic uh, tenet of statistical mechanics that, uh, that if you, it's the same looking at many different systems simultaneously. It's the same as looking at, at one system for a very long time. So this is really the, the, the basic of a, of a condition that your ensemble uh, Averages coincide with the averages along the realization. I and mean, this is what is not here. Because here you see the, the average of the one system observed for a long time is 80%. And if you average over many systems, of many replicas of the experiments, in some of them X would be ahead, and in some of them Y would be ahead, and, and so on and so forth. So this is just an explanation. But, uh, but those, uh, those, those instances abound in, 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 uh, in, uh, in uh, probability. Just uh, tolling cost is another example. I know that if, two, well, this is quite well known, that if two people just uh, towing uh, courses and one bets for uh, toss coins, one, pe one person bets for heads and one person bets for, for, for tails, and if you look at a game for a long time, it's always one of them is ahead virtually most of the time. This is, people find it very, very, very difficult uh, to believe, but 
uh, it's not the case that if those players that in classical probability uh, were called <coughs> Paul and uh, Peter, but now, nowadays we, we will call them Paul and Anne, uh, it will always be the case that in a given game, Paul is ahead most of the time, or Anne is ahead most of the time. So it's not the case that they equilibrate, and if uh, Anne has been ahead over the first uh, thousand uh, tosses, then uh, Paul will recover. This is not the case. Because, again, this is a case where it's not the same to look at one system of a, one replica of the experiment over a long time. It's widely different from looking at many experiments being conducted in parallel. So the ensemble average don't coincide, it doesn't coincide with the, with the long-term average. Does this help a bit? Uh, yeah, I think a little bit. Uh, I have, it's my computer. But if you are interested, uh, uh, because I, I, I have another talk here where I have those graphs, <laughs> and that, that's quite uh, quite remarkable. Well, that's all. Oh, okay, Ron, you can have the last question before coming. Would doping materials create a randomness that can be predictable? Sir? Doping materials. Yeah. Would it create a type of randomness that is actually predictable and you can evolve it in a steady way. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I believe that. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Coffee and pastries already as you don't know the store is